Joining us now from the United States is Dr. Perry Wilson, an Associate Professor of Medicine at Yale University. Uh, Professor, thanks ever so much for your time today. Um, uh, given the ubiquity of the virus, millions of people worldwide infected, are you surprised uh, by the frequency, the speed with which new variants are coming along? No, not at all. In, in, in fact, coronavirus compared to something like influenza is a, a rather slowly mutating virus. The problem, as you point out, is that every new infection is a chance for a new mutation to take hold. And so the reason we're seeing these variants pop up is not because coronavirus has some uh, supernatural ability to, to change. It's simply because of the number of infections worldwide. The converse of that, of course, is that if we can drive down the current infection rate through all the mechanisms that we know are effective, we actually will see less variants in the future. So that really needs to be our goal. Uh, Dr. Wall, we have you. We've just got a press release that's uh, dropped here from Moderna, uh, who are going to be a big, big manufacturer, important player in, the, in, in vaccines across the world, not least in the US where you are. Uh, it's, I think it's over 15 pages long, this press release, but I'm going to try and identify a paragraph that you might be able to help us with. Uh, it seems like what they're doing is looking at the uh, effects of these new variants, the South African and the B117 British a variant on their Moderna vaccine. I'll quote it directly and tell us what you, you think of this. Uh, it says, the study showed no significant impact on neutralizing, forgive me my uh, mispronunciation, titers against the B117 variant relative to prior variants. A six-fold reduction in neutralizing titers was observed with the South African variant. Uh, despite this reduction, neutralizing titer levels remain above levels that are, are expected to be protective. Um, what do you make of that? Yeah, let's part that a little bit. Um, and so what, what, what they're telling us is they're looking at the antibodies that come from the blood of people in their trials um, that were vaccinated. So they take these antibodies and they now expose these new virus variants to those antibodies to see if those antibodies can shut the virus down. And what uh, that paragraph suggests is that for B117, it, it seems fine. That's excellent news. For the South African variant, they needed higher levels of the antibodies to shut it down, but they were still able to shut it down. And the fact that uh, the antibody titers that are necessary to neutralize the virus are, are, are still in sort of the acceptable range is a testimony to the fact that these vaccines, particularly the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, engender such a strong immune response that even when the virus uh, uh, mutates a bit, uh, you can still generate sufficient antibodies to shut it down. So all in all, this is positive news. This is really great to hear. Pfizer actually put out uh, a similar paper um, that showed similar findings. So, so far, the news would suggest that the current vaccines will be these variants. But as we discussed a moment ago, more variants will come um, and, and they'll come faster depending on how many total people get infected. Well, that, that sounds like good news from Moderna. Just, there's a debate raging in the UK, elsewhere too, Perry, about uh, this idea that the UK has pioneered of leaving this gap, a bigger gap than was originally planned, up to 12 weeks between first and second dose, and that allows almost a, a playground for the virus to mutate. What would you make of, of those people who are, who are expressing strong misgivings about the wisdom of the British decision? It's been a theoretical concern um, uh, since the beginning for these two-dose vaccines. The idea here, uh, for your viewers, is that what if... One jab, as, as you say, gives you sort of partial protection, but it's enough to allow a, a, a subtle infection to develop and maybe more mutations to arise. I, there's th This theory is out there, but it has never been shown with any sufficient data. On the flip side of that coin, we have the imminent need to vaccinate as many people as possible in the hopes that we can actually delay transmission of these more contagious variants that we know are out there. So this is tough. You're in an area without a ton of data, so you're just sort of using the best science and prior experience. I don't think there's a 100% clear answer, but as different countries choose different approaches, we'll begin to learn which was the right one. I don't think it's crazy to spread out um, to spread out the shots. I'll give you my personal opinion, yeah. uh, because we have seen that there's some sufficient protection even in the first, uh, even with the first uh, jab. No, understood. Uh, this also might be a question, Perry, slightly beyond your clinical uh, remit, but do you think it makes sense in, in countries, and we're seeing a number of countries do it, the UK is contemplating this idea of you drive down the R number in your own country, then what you don't want to do is import it from a new variant from somewhere else. So you have a system of quarantine hotels. We've seen it in Australia, 400,000 people quarantining in hotels there. Looks like that may be coming to the UK. Does that make sense as a means of suppressing the future entry of variant mutations? 
Yeah, it, 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 it does, although I think the history of the virus has shown us that oftentimes, by the time the new variant is identified, it has already crossed our borders. You know, we know the B117 variant has been circulating in the U.S. probably for months now, even prior to when it was identified. Um, that said, appropriate quarantine testing um, and vaccination procedures for people entering a country is, is smart policy um, because uh, even if they're not bringing a new variant, they could be bringing any old form of coronavirus. Uh, and so again, it's gonna vary a bit by country. We'll see what the right answer is, but I think some period of quarantine and testing is, is, is important. Perry Wilson, appreciate your time. Thanks a lot. Thank you.